Uh, okay, we are live. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Depending on when and we're watching this Facebook Live, this is the voice and the face of Dr. Tolu Labinto. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Living Spring Family Medical Center here in the amazing city of Mansfield, Texas, not too far from Dallas, Texas. And at Living Spring Family Medical Center, we believe in helping our patients live long and well because we believe the quality of life is just as important as the quantity of life. And today we'll be having a conversation in line with our um, hashtag or our um, I health statement. And so today we'll be talking about the topic, Doc, my hair is falling out. Help me, it's hard to find a dermatologist that gets my hair. Um, and this would be the brown skin version um, of the live where we're talking about hair, hair loss. Um, and we decided to do this topic. I always like to talk about that first because um, I've had a few requests for this um, topic. And so I'm going to be having this talk with a dermatologist um, who is very, very well versed with this. And she should be joining us soon. Um, let me just check in to make sure she, she got my message because she did. Okay, very good. So she should be joining us soon. Now, if you're watching live, hashtag live. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay. And I will be bringing her on as she has just entered the, the backstage. Hi, Doc. Let me get her in. Let me get her in. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I am good. So nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. All right, awesome, awesome. Right before you joined, I was just um, introducing the topic, and I was about to introduce you when you popped on, so this is good. Um, and, and first, I want to say thank you for taking the time out to do this. You're a very busy person. I'm a big fan. I've talked to you on your websites and stuff. Um, so thank you for taking time to do this. And that being said, if you don't mind, kindly introduce yourself to our guests. Who are you and what do you do, Doc? All right. Well, my name is Dr. Kemi. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm also the author of the book, Live and Look Younger, and I'm a speaker. And, you know, I, as, as a general dermatologist, I help people with all matters regarding hair, skin, and nails. And the reason why I wrote this book, Live and Look Younger, is really to answer the questions that a lot of people had asked me that are on ways they can look younger beyond the cosmetic procedures that we do. So when I wrote this book, it was just my way of imparting my knowledge, lots of knowledge, sharing information that lots of people ask as a way of giving back to the world. Oh, awesome, awesome. I, I'm gonna make sure we, um... We share that information so people can have access to that. And I have to say, your testament to what you do, because I, I can I can see your skin, you're literally <laughs> glowing. So this is this is good. Now, um, for those who are watching, who are like, okay, well, how did you get into the field? Like, why do you do what you do, Doc? So I'm a dermatologist, and pretty much when I first started medical school, I didn't know I was, I was going to do dermatology, but I knew I liked working with my hands, and I knew I liked, you know, seeing patients who are not very sick. So dermatology worked out to be the perfect specialty for me, because the patients, you know, they walk in well, and I see patients of all ages, from the itsy-bitsy babies, all the way up to my oldest patient, who's 104. I see them in clinic. I'm a very visual person. So I like the fact that in dermatology, a lot of times, just by looking at something, we can tell what's going on. And so it's a very fulfilling specialty for me. And again, even though I didn't think I'd be doing it when I started medical school, it's like I've, I found my thing and I'm so glad I do it. I like how you said, not too sick. <laughs> yeah, not too <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. All right. So today we're talking about hair loss. OK, uh, I'm sure some people are watching like, well, I wish you talk about skin, maybe another one. Uh, but today we talk hair loss. So what are the common causes of um, hair loss? I know there are many, but what would you say be the top four or five are causes of um, hair loss? So I'd say the most common for sure is androgenetic alopecia. And that's the type of hair loss that we see whenever we think of balding, like whenever you think of men who have balding hair, where the, the, the hair is receding from the temples or, you know, where just balding, that's androgenetic alopecia. And that's the most common cause of hair loss in both men and women. Wow. Women can get it too. For men, of course, it's very obvious to see it, especially in the men who've lost the head, the, 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 the hair, the crown of their 
heads. In women, it's a little bit trickier because for women, our frontal hairlines will still be intact with androgenetic alopecia. But what will happen when people part their hair? There'll be a wider part, and, mm -hmm. and, and so and, and that's the field. So we also call it patterned hair loss. So male pattern hair loss and female pattern hair loss, they're the most common. And then the name androgenetic kind of explains what's going on. Andro androgens are hormones. So a lot of times there's excessive testosterone and DHT and those hormones come to the hair. They, they, they affect the receptors. Of, they, they pretty much they, they affect receptors on the hair follicle that inhibit growth, that make the hairs grow thinner and smaller and grow more slowly. So uh, it is also it also has a genetic component, and so for that type, you know, you you either got those genes from your family or you did not. It's really really common, but thankfully we have multiple treatments for that, and I know we'll go over that a little bit later on. So awesome. So that's the most common. Any other ones? Let me say. Let's say women. Well, I'm a bit biased, yeah. Let's so, yeah, so other really common ones, alopecia areata is also a very common form of hair loss. Alopecia areata is a more autoimmune type of hair loss where the white blood cells are actually attacking hair follicles. And so with, 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 with an alopecia areata, you will actually have patches of hair loss where the hair is completely gone. And there are many forms of alopecia areata. They're the forms where there's just one spot, where there's one coin shape. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. part of hair that's lost. And then other people have it all the way to alopecia totalis, where they lose all the hair on the head. They even lose their eyebrows and their lashes. All of that is autoimmune. And again, thankfully, in alope in the world of alopecia areata, we now have new exciting treatments that we can use for that. Ooh. Then another common cause of hair loss, especially in people, you know, I don't know who your audiences are. I'm sure you see a lot of people, but in, in people of African descent, like you and I, yeah. traction yeah. alopecia is a big, big cause of hair loss. And, you know, I'm ashamed today that I'm wearing braids. My braids are not done very tight, but things like braids, if you do braids all the time, that can contribute to traction alopecia. I probably have a little bit of it, but, you know, we do braids to make our, our hair a bit manageable. But anytime you have a hair cell where people are braiding too tight there's a lot of tension on the hair follicles and that causes traction it causes the hair to be pulled and the hair breaks so it either comes from styles like braids or people who do weaves people who do really tight ponytails can get traction and that's the mm. one form of alopecia that you can actually prevent we'll go into that but um you know androgenetic which we talked about earlier that one is genetic it's your under it's your hormones it's your genes so there's not much you can do to prevent that alopecia areata is autoimmune not much you can do to prevent that traction alopecia is a one form of, al of alopecia that comes from what you're doing to the hair from mm. mechanical friction so it's a one form of alopecia that we are empowered to pr protect ourselves prevent ourselves from getting ah okay well, you got to get them edges you know Yes, you have to protect the edges. And then there are also a bunch of, a lot of other inflammatory alopecias that we get. So for example, when people have inflammatory conditions like lupus, they can get alopecia. There's another type of alopecia called lichen planopillaris, which is also an autoimmune type of alopecia. Whenever people have fungal infections of their hair, tinea capitis, they can mm. have alopecia and hair falling out because of that. And then there are also other miscellaneous causes of alopecia that are common, like whenever people have thyroid anomalies, they can have alopecia. Sometimes when people have vitamin and mineral deficiencies, like if you have severe anemia, if you're low in vitamin D, so uh, if your thyroid hormones are all over the place, whether it's hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, that can also contribute to hair loss and hair thinning. Oh, wow. You've given us a whole, a whole lot of information. So it could be anywhere from genetics um, to overpulling, um, to fungal infections, thyroid issues, mineral deficiencies. I typically see the vitamin Ds, the iron deficiencies, uh, and thyroid as a cause. Um, can, can, would you say menopause too? There's a, there's a, there's a maybe somewhat. Yes, in menopause, a lot of women notice some thinning, and that's just because during menopause, with all the changing hormones, there's less estrogen and there's more predominance of testosterone, so that can contribute to the thinning, just the hormonal imbalances. Okay, are there things? So I have women who are watching it, and men possibly too, who are watching, who are like, um, okay, so that's a whole lot. I, of course. 
go see my doctor, have conversations, maybe do some tests. But are there things I can do to prevent hair loss? I mean, there are things you can do to prevent hair loss, depending on the type of hair loss. So lifestyle plays a big, big, big role in the health of our whole body. And sometimes the hair, sometimes, sometimes your hair and your skin is a reflection of how healthy your life is. So for example, if you're not eating a very balanced diet, if you're not including a lot of high quality proteins in your diet, if you're not having vitamins, especially vitamin C, um, and having the B vitamins, when when your diet is not so healthy your hair will not be as healthy so one way to really optimize your hair your hair health is to optimize your overall health and to make sure you're having a nice balanced diet that has good quality proteins you also want the good quality fats nice omega-3 fatty acids for example you can get that from having you know your salmons and other healthy fish and also things like flax seeds so you want that in your diet so i'd say if you want to optimize your hair for sure optimize your diet also stress stress is not necessarily a cause of hair loss but then we're, oh well actually yes it can so whenever you have acute stress i didn't really talk about it but there's also another form of hair loss called telogen effluvium where when the body is exposed to extreme stress whether it is a uh, a medical illness that led to hospitalization or even in some cases covid pregnancy other things is a form of hair loss called telogen effluvium where the hair for the hair cycle is is modified and all of most of the many of the hairs are pushed from the growth phase which is called anagen to the telogen phase which is the old phase and then when they when they, when they move from anagen the growth phase to the telogen the old phase there's a lot of shedding and thinning of hair so stress can be a big contributor to telogen effluvium. And so I'd say in general, stress can cause telogen effluvium, but for all forms of hair loss, if you're stressed out and you're very stressed, your hair won't grow as well. So the stress will exacerbate other causes of hair loss. So it's really, really important to learn how to control stress in your life, even for the sake of your hair. Your hair. Wow. And I love how you mentioned, you know, the, the healthy lifestyle, because, you know, sometimes it sounds like you know, <laughs> I give maggot of that, but but it's important. How you eat affects your hair, the outcome of your hair. All right. So my next question to you is this. A lot of people are like, okay, collagen. What about collagen? I could just eat a lot of collagen capsules. And, and, and what are your thoughts on collagen um, use for hair? So uh, collagen is still a bit controversial in general. Okay. I think the evidence is pointing towards the use for collagen in helping the skin and the hair, but it's still a bit of a controversial topic. So I usually tell people that to get collagen, if you can, try to get collagen that you can make on your own. So I, I highly encourage people to learn how to make bone broth and to get organic, an organic bone, whether it's organic beef or organic chicken, and then make your own bone broth at home. Cause you know, you'll get the collagen from the bone broth and you've made it yourself so you know what's in there and if you get it from organic grass-fed beef or other organic sources then you know you're getting good a good quality source of protein that being said, collagen supplements, I think, may help hair. There's not enough evidence pointing towards it. So that's why I'd say if people are having hair loss problems, and in general, if you want to boost your collagen, for sure, get into the habit of making bone broth. Or, you know, you can make vegetable broth if you're vegetarian, but bone broth does a lot better for collagen. And then as far as the supplements go, I'm sure they work and I, I know they're very good. There are many good quality supplements out there, but there are also many bogus supplements out there that don't deliver what they promise. So with supplements, just be careful. And that's why I just recommend if people can learn how to make their own bone broth, that's the best way to get collagen. Awesome. Thank you for that balanced um, response. Now let's talk um, uh, biotin. Yes. Um, would you would you say? And I'll be honest with you. I tend to uh, recommend that for first off. I said go try some hair, skin, and nail supplements. Try it. Do a picture before and after, so you can see if it's making any difference. What are your thoughts on that? So I think biotin biotin will helps hair a little bit, but biotin is overrated. So yes, it'll help hair, but it tends to help nails more than hair. It'll help the nails grow faster than it'll help the hair grow. And a lot of times if you're taking a multivitamin, you have the biotin there anyways. So in general, I I don't 
really recommend biotin for my hair last week. Well, I feel like if you get one of the hair growth supplements, like, you know, Nutrafol or Viviscal, they will have the right amount of biotin and you don't have to go out of your way to add additional biotin. I also caution people that whenever you take biotin, it can affect some lab studies. So whenever people who take biotin, if their thyroid studies are done, it can affect the accuracy of their thyroid studies. And even for some labs and people are having heart attacks and they're checking the markers for MIs, when it when they take biotin, it can also affect the accuracy of those test results. Yeah. So in general, I'd say um, if you have to take biotin, probably once or twice a week is enough, but mm -hmm. biotin is overrated and probably should, you know, a, a balanced diet and a good multivitamin is much better than trying to take biotin and trying to take all of these hair and, and nail supplements out there. All right, this is very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so uh, for those, um, of course, we're going to give you information at the end because I'm sure people are like, oh, I want to meet this doctor. Her skin is, is beautiful. I love how she talks about hair loss. But one more question to you. What are natural ways to strengthen our hair? And um, I know you talked about some of it before, but if you give us maybe two or three, like what do you see as natural ways to, let's say someone's having hair loss, they have to make an appointment, they have that schedule, but they're thinking, what are things I can do to kind of optimize my hair growth? What would you say? So I'd say for sure you want to have gentle hair care practices. So for gentle hair care practices, when you're washing your hair, most people don't need to wash their hair every single day unless you have very oily hair. So you can start with limiting the frequency of hair washing. Um, you know, for people like us who have, or people of African descent, honestly, unless you're doing a lot of sweaty activities, once a week is usually enough. And then for other hair types, three times a week might be enough, four times a week might be enough. Try to wash your hair as, as minimally as possible. And when you're using your shampoos, try to get quality shampoos that don't have a lot of harsh ingredients like sulfates and other things that strip off your hair of too many oils. Whenever you're washing your hair, you know, a lot of people like hot water, it feels good, but mm -hmm. honestly, warm water is enough for you. And then doing a cold rinse afterwards, cool, cooler water is better for you. Other things for your styling practice, try to avoid chemicals as much as you can try to avoid heat as much as you can and if you're using heat make sure you use a, a protectant on your hair to protect the hair shafts from the heat you should also try not to use heat every single day to straighten your hair it's, it's a good idea to just change styles around and balance things out other things I, re I recommend for bra uh, is that you should condition your hair. So after washing it, you should put a conditioner. And depending on the type of your hair, you could put in, you know, a conditioner that you rinse out after five minutes. Some people need conditioners that stay on for an hour or overnight. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're conditioning your hair with a good conditioner that has a lot of nourishing ingredients. Um, other things to do, sleeping. You know, sleeping with a silk pillowcase will help the hair, will help reduce friction between your hair and your pillows at night. So for a lot of people who want to really preserve their hair and pre reduce breakage, I say switch from your nice cotton pillowcases to a silk pillowcase. Um, so those are, just hair, those are just some examples of gentle hair care practices that I recommend. Um, some people, if you have time, I know in this American life that we live, we're so busy, but if you have time, you can learn how to make natural hair masks and natural hair conditioners. Some people, you know, there are many, many recipes out there and people can DM me if they want some recipes, but ingredients like avocados, olive oil, um, mm -hmm. things like neem, there are several things, mint, that you can use to strengthen your hair. As smelly as it sounds, onion is actually a good natural thing that people can oh use. My right? goodness. And you use the onion paste on your hair because it has sulfurs and it'll help the hair. It's it's kind of a stinky solution, but you can put it on the hair, then rinse it off well. But there are many natural things we can use. Hina is a nice natural way. If you have to dye your hair anyways, you may as well use Hina. It'll dye your hair. And additionally, it can strengthen the hair. So there are a few natural remedies out there that we can use and a few natural concoctions at home you can use to condition your hair and strengthen it. Wow, um, Dr. Kevin, you, you are you're a load of information. I actually have to stop typing because I'm gonna go watch it again and and kind of take notes too, so I can um, um, also share it with those in my life that need hair. Um, but Perfect. this is very, very, very rich and very, very good. Um, and so I have people who are watching who are like, 
I like this doctor. What's the name of the book she wrote again so I could get it? But doc, where can people connect with you to get more information and potentially work with you? So they can connect with me on social media um, at Dr. Kemi MD. That's Kemi K E M M Y M D, and you can find me with the uh, with the at Dr. Kemi MD handle on Instagram, Facebook. You can also go to my website www.drkemimd.com, and and you can reach out to me there. The book that I wrote is called Live and Look Younger and it's pretty much a guide on a comprehensive way to look younger because a lot of you know nobody wants to age prematurely so in this book you learn about how to come up with a skincare regimen so that you can you know use the, the products in the right way to look younger it also talks about things like diet exercise stress control sleep all these things that will help the skin and also will help the hair look healthy and to get this book you can get it on Amazon you can also go to my my website on www.drkemimd.com and you can also do www.drkemibook.com to get an autographed copy of the book hey, you rock it is this is thank you so so much um for for coming for sharing such wealth of knowledge when it comes to hair and skin too actually i've put the comments here and i've also put um the name of the book and there's also a link to the amazon page um thank you jeremy for doing that Oh, thank um, you so much. So, so that that can be, uh, people can connect. And that's on the Facebook page. I and mean, you all know you can get to Amazon and just put in her, her name and you will find the book as well. I've also put your Facebook and where you are on social media so people can connect with you um, also after the show. But thank you again, Dr. You're very Kami. welcome. One other last thing that I'll talk is not necessarily natural, but most people have heard of monoxidil or Rogaine. Yes. That's, that's a topical that used to be prescription only, but now it's widely available over the counter in pharmacies, places like Costco. So if you're, if, if you have androgenetic alopecia, if you notice there's balding in your family and you're starting to lose hair, Rogaine has been proven, uh, minoxidil has been proven to work to help you out. It's something that if you decide to use, you need to commit to using and you need to commit to using it every single day. It will work, but you have to apply it topically every single day and it will work for you. And we, we are now in dermatology, we are using it for very many forms of hair loss because it works in many ways but one of the ways it works is that it tends to dilate the vasculature in the scalp so there's more circulation and more nourishment going to the hair follicles and there are many other mechanisms in which it works so for those who have androgenetic alopecia or other forms you could definitely use over-the-counter minoxidil you don't need the permission you know you can just buy it over the counter but just know if you're using it you must be consistent and then plan to use it in the long term because if you quit using it you'll kind of go back to where you started you'll go back to baseline but it, it, it's it's something that in most of my patients with alopecia if they have the determination to apply it i will recommend that they do it and yes it's not something natural but it's something over the counter that's accessible to everyone and probably much easier for people than coming up with recipes of onion or other oils and other things to put on your scalp Thank you so much for highlighting that too. It's over the counter, so you don't need a doctor's prescription to try it. No, you of, course, don't. <laughs> of course, these are medical suggestions. See a doctor, see your caregiver to talk about this in more detail. But thank you, thank you so much for that nugget as well. Um, and for those of you who have been watching live or replay, thank you so much. You know, for next time, I appreciate if you put your names there so I can give you a shout out and just appreciate you for joining us at this time. Um, but Doc, you should look at the comments. People are appreciating you and saying thank you. This has been very, very helpful uh, for myself as well. So I appreciate you, Doc. Thank you so much. And thank you for the amazing work you do, all the education you provide. We are grateful for you and for all the work you do. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks for having me on. I'd love to come back again to talk about the skincare questions. That oh, you yeah. <laughs> We're going to do this in six months. So I'm glad you said that. And I've had, I'm going to, I typically have my guests come back in six months and we'll do a part two. Um, just as a follow up from this, but thank you for offering that so generously. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, please, as always, share, forward this to, to your friends, to your family members who could find this useful. And as always, if you or anyone you know is looking for an awesome, a thorough, and a passionate family physician in the Mansley, Texas area, I am she. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, Doc. Bye. Thank you.